Hi, Daisy Reinas. Hi, kings and queens. I pray that today I find you well rested, full of excitement um, for the days to come. And even though the weather here in San Antonio seems a little muggy, I'm appreciative of appreciative of it. Why? Because um, the sun gives me a lot of energy. And when it's like this outside, I, I just feel like this overwhelming calmness, relaxing, like it's just kind of like a permission to just relax as me. But if anyone needs to have permission to relax, because I do at times, obviously. Um, and today we're reading from Luke um, 16, 21 through 25. It's a short one today. Um, and it's again, we're still on the same subject of the use and abuse of riches, wealth, and all of that good stuff. That if we do not care for it properly or responsibly, it will wither in our hands and it will not multiply as the way God calls us to. So um, I pray that I die to the flesh. I pray for each and every one of that is under the sound of my voice. I pray that the Lord comforts you, gives you great revelation inside, uh, much wisdom and knowledge beyond our years of age, and that leaves you forever changed um, and with a greater skill set of spiritual discernment and a greater development and great knowledge more than anything. Um, knowledge is education and wisdom comes from experience. So I pray that I die to the flesh and I speak to the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we thank you for your presence and we thank you for your word and for us being uh, and leaving forever changed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Luke 16, 21 through 25, I'm going to begin. He longed to be, and yesterday we were reading on um, how our hearts needed to be in a sense of repentance because if not, we cannot just obey. We have to have a changing in our hearts in order for us to truly, truly experience um, the things and the, the change that God has for us, the deliverance, whatever it is that you're seeking. There has to be a change of heart before you can experience anything that God has for you especially to have his um, presence. So I'm going to begin. He longed to be filled with what fell from the rich man's table, but instead the dogs would come and lick his sores. One day the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torment, being in, torment in Hades, he looked up and saw Abraham's long way off. With Lazarus at his side, Father Abraham, he called out, Have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this flame. And that's where 25. Son, Abraham said, remember that during your life you received the good things just as Lazarus received the bad things. But now he is comforted here while you are in agony. And that's where we stop on 25. <clears throat> um, what my grandmother did right was being rich doesn't take you to hell and being poor either. What to what to be is to is having a relationship is to hold on, I'm sorry because her I can't understand her her cursive. Um, being rich doesn't take you to hell and being poor either what i can't understand what took us to hell is not having a relationship with jesus also not seeing to the needs of the needy so we should be we should be and see to the needs of all of us we should we should be I guess seeking and to see the needs of others. I guess she meant seeking. We should be seeking and seeing to the needs of others. Uh, we should be saved and seeking the needs of others. Thank you, Lord. Uh, her prayer is, Lord, help us to be a help us to be cheerful, cheerful givers. We know that sometimes we are not. Please forgive us. Make us have a heart. Make us have a heart. Make us have a heart after you is what I'm receiving of it. But her application is to give cheerfully. Um, and the study for this is, because <clears throat> we've been reading a lot on this, and it says in the parable, and the rich man, the rich man was a lover of money who was unfaithful, stewarding his positions, is what I read yesterday. Um, Jesus again returned to the supremacy of scripture when he described the rich man's plea for the resurrection of Lazarus as a messenger to his family to warn them as the penalty of rejecting God. Mm. Abraham's response pointed to an attitude of unbelief. Rejecting the scriptures would not be changed, would not change 
would, would not be changed even by one who had risen from the grave, as would be even more evident when Jesus himself arose from the dead. So um, as we're, we're basically closing off 16, um, I think tomorrow. But basically what it's saying here is what, what I got very clearly is um, you reject. When you reject, when you're rejecting things that God has called us to do, you are basically rejecting God. Many of the times we will reject or we don't want to hear what people have to say in the sense of they're sharing, you know, something that God has clearly indicated for them to share with us you know we can be like no no you know many of the times especially through our enemies or through the pharisees um god can speak to us so it's important for us you know to recognize that when we are not being generous or we are not being cheerful givers and i would tell you at all times in my cheerful no as i have shared um in one of the devotions that you know no we're not always cheerful givers of our time we're not always cheerful givers of our finances uh or material things that god has called us to no we may not always be however it's important that we remember that when we are saying no to help the needy or serve others we could be in fact rejecting god so that is a very dangerous place to be as my grandmother's application for today is to give cheerfully um and if you don't have the heart of you know to give cheerfully i pray that you seriously surrender whatever areas are causing you to you know not want to be generous with what god has called you to be i had um i have i, have, I guess incoming cops sorry for the technical difficulties but what i will say is when we are not being cheerful givers we are we could be greedy and that is areas where if we're greedy we don't open our hands Therefore, God cannot pour out what he has or he wants for us. So we're blessed to bless others. Um, and I just pray that this blesses you. And remember this too shall pass. And remember that if you don't have a cheerful heart in or generosity, I pray and I'm in agreement with you that you will get healed from that area to act in faith and don't act in fear because the enemy is a liar. And remember, God is at work in every area of your life. And I pray in the name of Jesus and I'm in agreement. I thank God in advance to give you that cheerful heart of joy and peace and knowing that when God calls you to release it's because he is trying to release into your life therefore you can make room sometimes we have to remove uh, monies 10 percent you're tithing God calls you to give a hundred dollars and you got like 300 in your bank account or 200 you know God will always provide so if you have little remember that he's calling you to give in little he can trust you in little he can trust you in much so i pray that this blesses you i'll see y'all tomorrow um and we're wrapping up 16 tomorrow so and just let me bless i'll see y'all tomorrow bye